Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. So hopefully by now you're sitting pretty with your Kubernetes cluster, be it RKE2 or K3S. And just to be aware, I have actually changed the script so that source IP is now working. That means things like PyHole and CrowdSec that require the source IP to operate can take full advantage of setting the external traffic policy to local. But one thing we haven't covered yet is hardware pass-through. And if you're trying to replace your existing Docker setup with Kubernetes, that's probably a vital part. Things like Jellyfin and Plex and anything else that can benefit from a GPU, you probably run it in CPU mode, which just isn't efficient and might just not work at all. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through how to pass through a GPU into Kubernetes. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna use my existing discrete Intel GPU, the A380. But before you turn off, most of you have probably got a consumer grade Intel chip and that will have an integrated GPU on it. Now, thankfully, due to the way in which the Intel drivers are shipped, the same package is used for both the integrated and the discrete. So that means that this process, the drivers, the pods that we're going to deploy should work no matter what you're using. So by the end of this video, you should have a GPU available within your cluster that you can assign to pods and get all the benefits of hardware acceleration. So for this demonstration, we're going to jump straight into Proxmox where I've set up a new VM with a GPU pass-through. It's exactly the same machine that I used in my previous Baldur's Gate gaming VM. And this time we're going to join that to the cluster. We're going to install some drivers from Intel. We're going to deploy a pod and then hopefully we'll be able to assign Jellyfin specifically to that node to take advantage of its GPU. Now, because I've only got one GPU, I will have to hard code this pod to be on this node. But if you're running a cluster that has all the same hardware or at least has an iGPU or a discrete GPU on both servers, great, you're gonna get all the benefits of GPU acceleration and you'll also get failover. Okay, so I've got a third Proxmox node that I've created, the same one as in a previous video. And on this, I've created a new virtual machine. Now, this is a 23.10 Ubuntu version. The reason I've done that is because 23.10 or 2304 ships with kernel 6.2, which has support for the latest Arc GPUs, which for me is important. If you're running an integrated GPU, you should be able to get away with older LTS versions like 22.10. And if we have a look through quickly, just to remind ourselves, please do go check out my other video where I go into this in detail. You can see here that I've passed the GPU through. It's PCIe 3 and 4, and it's a Q35 machine, and I've blacklisted the drivers so that this works. Now I'm going to hop into this machine. We're going to run an LSPCI just so that you can see the device within the machine. Okay, so I'm now logged into this virtual machine. And if I do an LSPCI to list all the PCI devices, you can see that at the bottom here, I've got VGA compatible controller and the audio device audio controller. So this is just the audio controller that's embedded onto the GPU, which I don't strictly need, but I've passed it through anyway. So now that we've verified that the GPU is available to the virtual machine, we can get onto the installation steps. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is install this into our cluster. So I'm gonna join this to my existing Kubernetes node and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So for this demo, I've set up a new RKE2 cluster using the new script I mentioned earlier. So as you can see, there's three masters and two workers. So I'm now gonna add this new machine as a worker node. So heading over to my GitHub, I've put all the commands that we need to get this node added to our existing cluster. And it's pretty straightforward if you've looked inside the scripts for deploying the cluster. And it's very similar whether you do this on RKE2 or K3S. With K3S, you can just use K3S up, catch up, and it's really straightforward. But having a quick look here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the RKE config directory. We're then gonna add a config file to that directory because when we start RKE, it takes any configuration files in that folder and uses those values. Those values are specified here. 
And we need to get the token, which we can get from our existing admin machine. And we need to set the VIP, which also, if you've forgotten, will be in your config file. Then I've just added some labels and you can add whichever you want. We're then going to install RKE2 and we're then going to enable the service. So let's copy these commands and run them and hopefully we'll have this joined to our cluster very shortly. So the first thing to do is to make that directory. Then we want to nano or whatever text editor you want to use into that folder and create a file. So here it's just going to be called the config.yaml. Now that we're inside, we need to copy and paste this text here. And we need to populate it. So for the token, let's make sure you delete all of the brackets. You can find the token on your admin machine. So somewhere like this. And the script will have put it in the home directory here. Now when you open that, it looks something like this. So make sure you select all of this and copy it. And then you can paste it into your text editor. So it looks like that. The next thing we need to do is to change the VIP IP. And so in my case, that's 192.168.3.50. But just check your configuration file, the script that you ran, and it will have the VIP listed in there. So now that looks right for my cluster. So I'm going to save this and exit it. And then we're on to the next stage. So to do that, let's become root. And then we're going to head over to the script. And we're going to copy this command here. So with any luck, we should now be able to run the script. It's going to find that configuration file we created and it should be able to join our cluster. So there it is going off and finding it. Nothing to see here, different from when you've run my script. So I'll skip over this part and I'll see you in the next bit. Now that that's starting up, let's head back into Rancher and hopefully we'll see this joining the cluster. So here you go, you can see that GPU pass-through is now being seen. So it should just be a little while before this is fully operational. And so now that a little bit of time has passed, you can see that it's fully available, it's even got the labels we specified, and if you look closely, it's even on a different subnet within my home lab. So now that we've got this added to the cluster, we're ready to get onto the next part, which is to install the drivers. So to do that, I'm gonna head over to the Intel website, but the process should be the same if you've got NVIDIA or AMD. I'll put a link in the description below for their respective sites, but, it should be pretty simple to get it up and running. So over on the Intel website, and remember this is the same process for an integrated GPU and a discrete GPU, we wanna head down to the installation. Now, I'm just gonna skim over these documents, but I recommend that you go and read them because it tells you sort of what the process is and why you're running some of these commands. Now, things like checking that the drivers are installed is a good idea just to make sure that you've got everything up and running. And it mentions that the i915 GPU DKMS package is recommended for Intel discrete GPUs. That's what I've got. Also, it mentions the 6.2 kernel, which I already spoke about earlier. And it's the reason that I'm running Luna Ubuntu, because it has 6.2 in it. So my Arc GPU is natively supported. Now, the next bit of interest is where we want to install this package. So you may not know, but this is going to install some pods onto our cluster to enable it to share the GPU. And there's a couple of options. We can install it to all of the nodes, which would be great if you've got an homogenous setup, i.e. you've got the same GPU family within all of your nodes. I don't because my Dell doesn't, but this extra VM on a different cluster does. So I'm going to go for the next one which is to install to nodes with Intel GPUs with NFD, Node Feature Discovery. So you can see here that we've got to go back to our good old friend kubectl, and we've got to install one of these manifest files. So the first thing to do is we're going to deploy NFD because we don't have it by default. So I'm now going to copy this command here, and I'm going to put it into my kube admin machine, so not the GPU one, this is the admin machine, and this is the one that you'll have run the script on previously. So in my case, it's the RKE2 admin, 
And I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to edit the value with the release version that we want and changing it to version 0.28.0. Hopefully it will be able to run that. So here you can see it's gone and created a load of custom resource definitions, service accounts, role bindings, clusters, config maps, etc. Great. That all looks good. So on to the next part. So now it's going to create the rules that this tool here, the node feature discovery has to find GPUs. So again, we're going to paste this into the terminal and I'm going to change that to use 0.28.0. So now that's going to go away and create those rules and we can move on to the final step in the process. The final step here is going to create the GPU plugin daemon set. And this is what's going to enable us to start sharing this with our pods. So again, we're going to paste this command in and we're going to edit the version, hit return. And with any luck, we should have this in a moment. So there you can see that it's applied the GPU plugin. So now we should be in a position where we can go and test that this is working. So let's head into Rancher and have a quick look. So clicking on Rancher. Oh, great. We can see that there's a load more labels here. So previously we just had Longhorn and Worker, but now we have GPU Intel device count one. That's great because there is one discrete card there. It says that it's present. It's given it an A series, I guess because it's an ARC, that might be wrong. And it's enabled the Intel feature node for Kubernetes, GPU is set to true. So, so far so good, I think we're on the right lines. And back over on the Intel site, we can run this command here, the cube control, which is gonna spit out all of the nodes which have a GPU. So running this, yeah, you can see that GPU pass through I915, that's that Intel driver, one that's true or it means it's got one gpu i'm not sure but we know that the rest don't so from my perspective this looks great so to test this out i'm going to be deploying jellyfin and i'll share this config when i upload the video but the key thing here and this is replicable for all pods that you want to use a gpu you need to add here the resources limits gpu Intel i915 set to one. That's requesting one GPU. This will be different. You'll need to change the vendor, whether you're using an NVIDIA or an AMD, but the syntax is the same as here. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this, and hopefully in the next scene, you'll see Jellyfin up and running, and it'll be using hardware transcoding to transcode a video file to a different resolution or bit rate. And so now with Jellyfin up and running, if I check the logs, you can see that we've got here available decoders. And if we look closely, you can see that these are enabled. And on the last line, you can see that available hardware acceleration types, CUDA, VAPI, QSV, DRM, OpenCL, and Vulkan. So that's good. It's recognized that the card can see it. And you'll also see here that the container is on the GPU pass-through node. So it's honoring that limit we put in the deployment. So now if we go into Jellyfin, we go through the installation wizard. And if we head into the settings, we can pick Intel QuickSync. We can choose all of the hardware decoding. So I'm gonna do them all just because this card supports them all. We can re-encode in HEVC if we need to. Then I'm just gonna hit save. Okay, so I've downloaded the obligatory Big Book Bunny because there's no copyright infringement here. And I've opened up a second tab of Jellyfin just so I can see the statistics here about playing. So if I go to the movie now and hit play, you'll see that on here, if I click the I, it's transcoding and it's doing it at 300 FPS. And also if I fire up the terminal for GPU pass-through, you can see here that it's using the video and the video enhance, which I think is the encoder and decoder. So excellent. We now have GPU acceleration within Kubernetes for the use of Jellyfin. And you can repeat this for any of your containers by specifying that limit. 
So hopefully this now gives you another piece of the puzzle for migrating from Docker into Kubernetes. With full GPU acceleration for the pods that you require, you get all of the benefits that you probably had with transcoding and things that require GPU acceleration. Let me know in the comments below what you're going to use this for. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.